Ladies and gentlemen, changes in the way that we deal with the personal data are coming and it's better for us to be prepared for that. Uh, I'm very happy to have the possibility to join you at this meeting in Malta, at least virtually, at least the way uh, that I do it right now, uh, welcoming you from the European Parliament where the GDPR, uh, things connected with the cyber security and also e-privacy regulation are right now on the top of the agenda of uh, all the politicians in the European Union, but also those uh, who are the legislators and who are going to prepare the solutions for the nearest future. Uh, I would like to share with you some thoughts on cybersecurity, some thoughts on the uh, general data protection regulation and the regulation on e privacy. Cybersecurity, which is sadly uh, in, at the top of the news uh, again. Uh, we are observing that as the European Data Protection Supervisor, since the European Data Protection Supervisor is playing three roles. The first role is the supervisor of the EU institution, so the Data Protection Authority, which is uh, dealing with the data protection in the institutions, bodies and agencies themselves, but also in all kinds of databases, large-scale uh, IT systems that exist in the European Union. The second role that we have uh, is the advisory role in the uh, legislation. So whenever any kind of legislation is in the Parliament or in the Council, or it's on the stage of preparation by the, uh, by the European Commission, the European Data Protection Supervisor, either individually or as a member of the Working Party of Article 29, is issuing the opinion in this uh, respect. Uh, that also means that uh, our third role is to cooperate with data protection authorities in the countries. Uh, and this is a part of the story that I'm going to talk today to you, since uh, the chief information officers from the member countries uh, are also in the permanent contact with the data protection authorities uh, uh, of their jurisdiction. This cooperative task uh, is involving the work in the working party of Article 29, and uh, from May next year, it will also mean that the European Data Protection Supervisor will be providing the Secretariat for the European Data Protection Board. I would like to address all these roles uh, uh, together in uh, today's uh, presentation. Well, I have to start from the thing which is uh, in the news uh, for last week's. Uh, I mean, last week's we are all watching the massive uh, cyber security attack, cyber, cyber ran ransomware attack uh, that is called WannaCrypt or WannaCry. Some of you may probably be affected by that. There's no need to raise hands at this moment, uh, but we are still ha uh, fighting with the results uh, of what happened uh, a few weeks uh, ago. Uh, a lot of systems were affected. And we have the reasons to believe that this attack has been made with the tools which are collected and stocked by the state security agencies. When these agencies themselves are the victims of the hacking attack, their cyber weapons were acquired by criminals and hostile state operators. Some of these intrusions tools were made uh, publicly available earlier this year, and we may call that this is the double-use software rebellion. The current attack shows that even the state agencies uh, cannot guarantee that their cyber weapons will not fall in the hands uh, of the criminals, will not serve uh, the other purpose that they were definitely not created for. Many experts are expecting that uh, the other tools which were in the same collection will be in use uh, in the nearest future again. The EU policy initiatives aiming at increasing the uh, intrusive powers of the state agencies must take into account the fact uh, that this lesson has been learned uh, this year. Both EDPS and also ENISA had already warned against the use of the and the distribution of such uh, intrusion tools uh, in 2015. EDPS has warned that the growth of unregulated market uh, for the tools like that uh, may cause the real uh, security problems uh, for the business, uh, for the market, uh, and also for the states uh, themselves. We uh, can remind that uh, again today. 
We need to, gather, we need to work together with the governments uh, inside the European Union and uh, with other countries that are uh, cooperating with EU on common initiatives in order to, co uh, to contain the risk resulting from the creation of the collection of the, such uh, cyber weapons. Security measures that would have uh, prevented the recent attacks have been available and uh, should have been applied for all important IT systems. The advice from the EU Information Security uh, Agency, ANISA, and uh, from the Computer Emergent Response Teams, the CERT EU and also the National CERT Teams, uh, have to be taken into consideration uh, as also as a part of preparation <coughs> to the introduction of the General Data Protection Regulation, which, as you know, is addressing the security issues quite uh, broadly. Allow me to develop some ideas on information security and the relationships with the privacy. First of all, I have to say that the uh, dichotomy of security versus privacy is the false dichotomy. Uh, the security is in the heart of the discussion on privacy protection and the privacy protection is the part of the discussion on security. This security and privacy are very similar ideas, both concepts contained in the heart of the individual. The person whose rights have to be applied, whose rights have to be uh, defended. The problem today is that the security in particular is a highly contested notion. And the danger with contested notion is that uh, every serious problem gets presented uh, as a security problem to fix. And increasingly by more and more intrusive forms of uh, uh, surveillance. I fully recognize the need uh, for appropriate actions uh, to be done <coughs> for the legal measures to be created, especially for the fight with terrorism, but also with the fight with, for the fight with the cybercrime itself. And uh, the data protection authorities are sharing these views. Uh, data protection authorities like EDPS uh, are not in principle against uh, any specific measure which uh, interferes with the right to privacy. But of course, any of those actions, any of those measures should be evaluated in the light of the fundamental rights of individual. The necessity of these measures and proportionality have to be taken into consideration. There is, unsurprisingly, another aspect of this discussion. We all fully agree that the information security and uh, as the security of the data systems and networks uh, is uh, crucial for the development and the success of the economy and uh, for our administration. Even the security of the service, to name some of the examples. We can, we can the data security, uh, security we, uh, making it weak, uh, for the sake of allowing more pervasive uh, surveillance uh, would destroy the trust and would undermine the electronic business as a whole. Encryption has grown into the critical tool uh, to protect confidentiality of the communication and uh, its use uh, has increased after the revelations uh, about the efforts of the public authorities uh, to intrude uh, into the communication between the parties. If we create any kind of backdoors or our devices uh, or our encryption scams uh, uh, will be weakened, uh, then the criminals and the terrorists uh, are supposed uh, to use uh, the same ways, the same paths uh, that we may try to use uh, for the uh, security agencies. We actually need targeted surveillance and uh, minimize uh, effect uh, for the privacy of the persons. Reinforcement of law enforcement capabilities may need to be accompanied by the right to encrypt and the right of citizens to use end-to-end -end encryption without any kind of backdoors protects the communication. Having said all of that, I have to stress that there are some developments in the field of encryption that are maybe, maybe not scary but they definitely need more attention. I mean especially information which, is which was distributed in the late uh, 2016 uh, uh, about uh, some artificial intelligence entities uh, that start to develop their own encryption. So there is a way of communication between the artificial intelligence entities uh, which the human, uh, human being does not have an access to. 
that's an interesting development, but I have to say that this is definitely not the way of hard uh, encryption uh, tools that we are thinking about. GDPR is coming. Let's take then the higher perspective and let's talk about data protection. Data protection is necessary in order to safeguard the individuals uh, against unfair decisions uh, uh, using information and uh, uh, information about them. Data protection enables us to develop freely our own personalities uh, and to participate uh, and exercise the freedoms in the democratic society. The GDPR gives the unique opportunity to strengthen data subject rights uh, and accountability of the data controllers uh, in public and in private sector. In other words, uh, we can say that we have uh, the big opportunity to make an improvement uh, in the situation that we have at the moment. GDPR will apply from the next year, from 25th of May 2018. We also expect uh, that uh, at the same time the uh, new uh, e-privacy rules may start to exist. There is no need to panic, well, not, at least not at the moment. But definitely, we have to prepare for this challenge. Some of the people say that the situation can be compared with the arcade game whack a mole uh, where uh, every time you think you knock out solution or another even legal issue uh, is appearing as the uh, next challenge. Or you can say that this is like in the TV series when you are waiting for the last episode to answer all the questions and, and you find the new questions to be answered and the new ones to be addressed. The Data Protection Authority is trying to address some of these questions in their guidance that are prepared right now in the working party of Article 29. But we have to be aware of two things about this guidance. First of all, the real guidance for the GDPR will be prepared by the European Data Protection Board. So those documents that are right now prepared by the Working Party of Article 29 may, and I believe they will, be then confirmed as the guidance from the European Data Protection Board. But at the, at the moment they are formally not the guidance of the EDPB because EDPB does not exist uh, and will not exist by the 25th of May 2018. The second thing we have to bear in mind is that the guidance are not to answer all the problems uh, of the market and not all the problems of the public authorities. The first and main goal of the guidance is to uh, harmonize the way the data protection authorities are interpreting the law and the way they address uh, the questions which are posted by the market and which are posted by the public authorities. I already said that we are waiting for the e-privacy regulation. GDPR represents uh, one of the EU greatest achievements in the recent years, but without the complementary and effective legal tools uh, on protect the fundamental right to privacy in the private uh, privacy in the communication and the confidentiality of the communication, this framework is not full, it's not ready to the very end. So we definitely need at least this part to be finished. There's a lot of things to discuss about uh, e-privacy regulation and I guess that uh, it will be the big part of your discussion during this uh, meeting. But let me conclude by saying again the sentence which I said just a few seconds ago. The confidentiality of communication is crucial. And GDPR is not saying about confidentiality of communication. If we want to have this rule really based in the law of the European Union, then we have to d deal with the e-privacy regulation and also with another problems which are then pointed in this document. GDPR is a challenge, but it's definitely a challenge to be met and definitely the thing to be achieved. Even if we don't have the data protection rules for the EU agencies at the very moment, uh, we will uh, have them following the, uh, the uh, framework that was created in the GDPR. The dichotomy of the security versus privacy is false. It's fake. Security and the privacy are very similar ideas to contain us, their core, the individuals, and their ability to live in the dignity and free from the interference. Security measures are needed, of course, 
and uh, any of those measures needed uh, to be evaluated in the light of the fundamental rights. In our fight against cybercrime and terrorism, in our fight to protect uh, the personal data, we need to find a way to minimize the adverse impact uh, for the society and for the economy. And the use and the distribution of the intrusion tools uh, and the growth of the unregulated market uh, represents today the risk to our information society. I have to say I'm sad if I hear the politicians who for the sake of the electoral campaigns say that we need to regulate the internet and we need should make it more controlled environment, controlled by the public security uh, agencies. I'm afraid there is a big misunderstanding when you want to use the security as an excuse for throwing out the principles of freedom this society is built on. If you do it because of the terrorist attack that uh, are uh, going on uh, in uh, some countries of Europe, uh, you have to say to yourself, uh, this is what the terrorists wanted to achieve. They wanted us to resign from the freedoms that we are so proud of. Thank you and uh, I hope uh, you will have a wonderful conversation in Malta and uh, I really, I'm really very sorry I will not be able to take part in it. But this is mainly because uh, of the uh, activities that we do right now with the security in Europol. Thank you.